They don't want you to see it that way. They don't want you to see that Jesus came back a well-raised Egyptian. That Jesus went to the mystery schools, was tried and proven. They don't want you to overstand. You got to catch it now. They don't want you to understand what the real resurrection from the dead is. That it happens in many places <laughs> every day. I shouldn't say every day, but at least every last Thursday in the month in America. That people are being raised on a regular basis from death to life by the lion grip, the lion of Judah, pulling them on out the muck and mire. Are you walking with me? They don't want you to know. <laughs> They don't want you to know that there's a certain school that Jesus belonged to. He got raised a certain way. He got a certain information. You know, and his mother, yeah, she saw the star in the east. Yes, she was an eastern star. She saw it. She had to. You hear me? They want you to see it from the other side of the coin, from the Roman side of the coin from the Greek side of the coin, from the Caucasian side of the coin, from their point of view. You know the point I'm talking about, don't you? They want you to see it from their point of view, not our point of view. But when you really step back and you start to analyze the Jesus story, and you take it gradually, and you look at the things he did, and you look at the situations that surround him, and you look at the problems that he encountered, and you stop and say, why? Why would such a good man I have to go through so much suffering. What was the point behind it? Did Lazarus pass to school? Wasn't Lazarus pulled out by Jesus? Wasn't Lazarus supposed to be dead? Now if you're laying in the ground and you're dead, you're dead. And rigor mortis sets in, you're dead. Now any doctors or nurses or anybody know anything about the brain and death and oxygen and breathing? If there's anybody that does, please help me to help these folks to know that once rigor mortis sets in and that oxygen stops going to the brain, even if they brought Lazarus out the tomb, he still wouldn't know where he was. He would have been brain dead. Unless that was some symbolic ritual. You see? And they call Jesus Rabboni. And they say it means master, teacher. You understand that? And Jesus thus was the master who was educated in the mysteries of Egypt who also reached in the cave and brought Lazarus out of the muck and mire. You know why I say that? Because if not, Lazarus would still be alive, walking the earth today. Because it says in the Bible, it's given man once to die. Once to die, God said. So if Lazarus was dead and Jesus brought him back, Lazarus is somewhere still alive. All the Bible is wrong or being misread because they don't know that the Bible was put together by a group of men who are a fraternal order who took the Egyptian mysteries that they learned in Greece constructed the rituals uh, the initiations and fought it over to Jerusalem and introduced it to the rabbis and it became the mystery schools of the Kabbalah and the mystical schools of the Essenes who were practicing just the way the Egyptians. And Jesus was one of them. He did not practice Judaism the way they did. Did he keep the Shabbat? Yes. He was definitely able to be operative in his religious practices. Operative versus speculative. Meaning to actually put on the service for people to see is to be op in operation. For people to see it and not know what they're doing is for people to speculate at what they see. You understand what I'm saying? So there's two schools going on in front of you.
in green, yellow, and blue. Earth, water, and fire. So when you see the green light and you meditate on the green light, you're only going for two of the elements of the four natural elements that all mystical schools identify with. They have four elements or four deities and four colors. Now what are the three primary, what's the main three colors that all other colors come from? Red, yellow, and blue. Green is not one of them. So green is a stage away from the original three colors. It's a journey. See, your problem is you're looking at yourself as traveling that way when you're actually traveling that way. You're going back towards the source. But they taught you that God is outside of you up there and they got us looking and traveling in the wrong direction. They got us going to look for God there. We're moving this direction and not this direction where God said he has placed his throne in your chest. You follow what I'm saying? They got to keep on pulling you away from the divine principle. I'm reaching that when you get deities appointed in rank, you had Murduk, who is the sun god of Babylon, and the same as Ra in ancient Egypt, the same as uh, Melchizedek or Melisadak, the same as Nebi Khidr in Arabic, the green one, all the same being, a mortal man, right, who claims to have neither mother nor father, something that you also learn in the ancient mysteries, be it Freemasonry, Shrinery, Knights of Columbus, you learn that you, that you are a widow's son, that you have no mother, no father, that you, are, you stand alone to be judged and built. All right, they, when initiated into orders, is when they say they appoint. Now, if you went into a Masonic Lodge, the Grand Master of the Lodge, he becomes known as the Supreme Grand Master. He becomes the God in the Lodge. He's sitting in the east of the Lodge, and above his head is the symbol of geometry, the G. The G in actuality in English is nothing but a circle and a square. Circle, square. And that's the roots of all geometry which is responsible for Geo or Ge Gaia or Earth or G or Ki or Anunnaki. So the Grand Master in the Lodge who sits, at, or sits on that central seat, the seat of God, has deacons on one side, <laughs> and I don't want to go into too much, but there's beings in the lodge that sit to his right and his left, the same way Jesus would sit to the right and the left, or the cherubim sit on one side and so on. So he becomes God of the lodge. And he's controlling the whole planet. He's deciding, like a zodiac, in which direction all these souls seeking light would go. And they say they're traveling east, but in actuality, you cannot travel east without traveling west. You can't go in any one direction at any one time. There's no way you can travel due east without traveling due west. Because once you pass the point in which you decided was due east, you're on your journey around to west. So when you enter the lodge and you're traveling for the light due east, you're only getting to the G, So because the G is the mask of God that you then take down and you become a master. And if you're raised like a son to the, high, to the right point, you're sitting on that throne as God. Tamuk, appointment of God in the Bible, or the appointment of Ra, or the appointment of Re, are positions in the mystery order of Tehuti. Re was a person. Re withered. Re aged. And this is why Asit or Isis was trying to get the master or the secret tone. They call it the word. In Christianity, they call the word the logos. And they say the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. It was not anything made, it was made without him. In him was the life. And the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in the... And the darkness comprehended it not. So the light was outside and went into the darkness. That couldn't have been God. The light couldn't have been outside and go into darkness in the shell of a man and be God. 
because there's not a place where God isn't. So there couldn't ever be a time when man is a shell where God is not. Because God is omni. So we must be talking about another force of light. And that force of light is referred to as your solar body. Robert, that's all right. Robert. I had a question um, in the black book on page 33. It's kind of a reference to um, the sister's, that was the brother's question back there. On, um, you said that you have mastered one, it's on page 33, you said you have mastered. Strange page. <laughs> you have mastered one, two, three, and have traveled, excuse me, one and two, and have traveled three, five, seven, and now you hold the key between one and nine, and um, I was trying to get a clear understanding on the numbers. Not being a Freemason, girl. <laughs> not being a Freemason, you might not understand that oftentimes in Freemasonry they might ask an individual, "How old are you?" And the answer is one, three, right? Uh, one, three, or five, right? And that's making reference to which degrees of the ladder of Jacob they have climbed. So I'm making reference to any Freemason who comes across that book and says, how old are you? I say, well, I've already passed one, three, five, and I went on to seven and straight on up. They don't know, they don't get past three degrees, and those three degrees are one, three, five. Enter the Prentice, Fellow Craft, and Master Mason. That's as high as they go. There's no such thing as 33 degrees in Freemasonry. There's no such thing as 32 degrees. The original degrees of Freemasonry are only three degrees. Everything else is honorary studies. You follow what I'm saying? In Egyptians, as we never gave them over three degrees. We never allowed them outside of person, places, and things. And because they are the masters of most educations, educational systems destiny, everybody, Muslim, Christian, Jew, are all trapped under three degrees. Person, places, and things. And when you say, I'm going to take people to a another level I introduce seven and then at that point I say and in the metaphysical or esoteric doctrine you've been taught about the seven seats kokab or chakras well because the people who were teaching that science only had seven you follow they don't know about the nine now I'm taking you from the seven up to the next you have to learn about the next two chakras, not just the one that's in the crown side. If you get to the, like I said, if you go to the ancient Egyptian word and you look in the dictionary under the word brow seat, you get the Egyptian word mir, which you also know has been translated as pyramid or central fire. Right? That's the site right there. They've, they considered this the eighth, I mean the sixth point, the third eye. Then they went to the crown with their 12 occult nerves, which represent the 12 signs of the zodiac, and in the center of there, they put the seventh seat, the crown chakra. When they get back to Egypt at the temple of Hathor, or Hathor, and they look on the ceiling towards the sky, and they see the calendar of Dendora, they notice that in the center of it is Tawaret. And Tawaret is a female deity. The Moors call her Zodiacus the center of the sign of the zodiac. They also call her Ninti. They call her, they got many different names. We see her standing in the center as the mother of mammals that are also reptilians. You follow what I'm saying? So we have, these de we have this degree of study that takes us from Earth at one, up the body, three, on out the body to five, and straight on into the universe to seven and we keep on traveling right the zodiac represents our woman the mother of all creation the science of the universe and the wapo in actuality is a feminine word in ancient language for that for, for uh, science sound right and reasoning it applies to the woman so those are key signatures to identify and when you get the handbook that's coming soon right you when you study the handbook i might walk up to you one day and say well how old are you and then you say, I'm nine. You see, you follow? When you get nine, then you're born again. No Christian can be born again until he's nine and see Christ as they call him, Christos or Krishna. 
said, you must be born again. And when he asked, you mean I must go back into the womb? He said, no, you must be born of spirit and truth. You follow? You must be saved. You, have, you must receive grace and joy. And he couldn't understand. Nicodemus couldn't understand where Jesus was coming from. Well, Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek because Jesus was an Essene. And the only Egyptian order he could find in all Judea were the Essenes up in Jordan. So he went there following John the Baptist because he was after the order of Melchizedek and the Essene order was the Egyptian order and that's the only place those degrees were being conferred. You follow that? So when he made that I am the way, the truth and the light, he was telling them, come behind me, walk this path through this temple and I'm going to give you this special guidance. I'm going to give you this special truth, some information that I got. It caused me problems in the temple because when I came back from Egypt, I had to confront the rabbis and the priests and I got in a great argument with them about these truths of Tawaret because I had to explain to them that the Tawar or the Torah or the Tanakh, that holy book, is nothing but Tawaret. The female in the center of the zodiac, Torah, Tawaret. And they wasn't ready to accept the Egyptian mysteries because they had already set up a doctrine. So he had to put aside what he learned in the ancient Egyptian order while he studied in ancient Egypt and submerge himself amongst the Essenes. And at that point, he was stepping down in degrees. So you'll come around again, I promise you, and you'll read it and you'll laugh. And then I'll walk up to you sometime between now, maybe in Savior's Day, and say, by the way, how old are you? And you'll laugh when you answer me, when you realize how simple it is. It's explained in the handbook. That's going to be past a few. All right? But, but Freemasons use that, one, three, five, you know, seven. That's what how old, and when you call him a master mason, they consider themselves seven. And that seven is what? The highest point on the chakras, or the climbing of the kundalini, the ladders of Jacob, they get to the top. And if you see the Freemasonry uh, chart, you see they have all the degrees going up. And at the top, they have a triangle with an eye in the triangle. And that's when you see at the top, the highest so-called degree. And they'll call that 33 degrees, but in manifestation will be kunsu. Because when they get to that so-called degree, they give you a, a phoenix bird looking in two different directions. And that's the symbol of Hunsu, the healer of ancient Egypt. And that eye is there, is looking down, what is it? That's the eye of Ra, it's the sun. And they find out that the light that they've been following is really the light of the, light of the, light of the, he said, I'm the light of the, I'm the light of the world. In the Holy Quran, it says, it says, Allah is the Nur Samawati Wal Ard. Nur Samawati Wal Ard. That means the light of the heaven, the sky, and the earth. When you become the light of the sky and the earth, you are still the light of the world because you're referring to the sun. You can't immediately adjust that and say, the light of the heaven and earth means my mind or my intellect because I just explained to you that intellect is conceived in darkness, inside the head where there is no light. The thoughts come in there and then they come back out. You follow? So when he says, I am the light of the heavens and the earth, the sun. So the Freemason, after all of his traveling toward the light, finds out that the light he was traveling towards was nothing more than the sun. And all the knowledge he got was nothing more than knowledge with inside this earthly range. Sciences, arts, fine arts, <laughs> mathematics, geometry. And he's like puzzled. And a hand reaches down from heaven and pulls him up out the muck and mire if he wants to step through the mass and become a god. When he becomes a god, they refer to him as a supreme grand master in the large as opposed to simply a master mason or a grand master who can open and close the large but not does not bear the title supreme grand master he sits in the eastern point of the large and above him is the eye of god which is in actuality 
Re, the sun. He now is amongst the ranks of the Egyptian deities and inherits the responsibility of conveying the message to people on earth. If they are worthy and capable of keeping the secret. And what is the secret? The secret is hidden in the name, the sacred name. What is the sacred name? What's, what name in Egypt is a ray and deals with a secret? Huh? Amun. Amun means the hidden one, the one who keeps the secret. And so the Freemason who walks through Jah, Baal, and on, he accepts the Bible, the Quran, and the Enumailish, then finally gets to the Book of Dead, he's passed through the three, what they call monotheistic religions, and each one of them, at the end of their ritual, or when the light of their ritual starts to descend or end, says, Amen, Amun, or Umain. And they all end with the same name of the same deity. And that's why in Revelation chapter 3 verse 14, he literally says, Amun, the faithful, the faithful, the true witness. The faithful, they put a definite article to, to make sure that you don't think they're talking about Jesus. You follow? All right. Oh, God. Uh, oh, God, God. Uh, the Bible says that um, God said he created light. What does that mean in terms of Freemason? Okay. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> Yo, they like to put me in these spots. All right. First of all, let's establish this. Right? When the Bible was being revealed, say, oh, 4,000 years ago, that was before Tesla... Before Carl Edison, and there were no fluorescent lights, or no incandescent lights, or no gas tube lights. In actuality, in the Bible, when it says let there be light, they're saying let there be fire. That's the only natural light. You with me? They couldn't be talking about a light bulb, because they didn't exist. But there's a, a slight uh, allusion to God went click and the lights came on. And you can start seeing things as opposed to someone confused something. You with me now? Now watch what happens with that. In order for you to have fire, you have to have oxygen. Right? You also must have some matter to consume. Something to burn. And between one hydrogen and eight oxygen, if we get to the sixth element, we come to carbon. Carbon is a substance that's result from burning. You cannot have a fire burning without oxygen. So when God said, let there be light, he was already at the eighth element. It couldn't have been the beginning. He was already at the eighth degree. Oxygen, or ought not. You know with me? Think about that for me. Now, when you step into Freemasonry, let's say our connotation of light is knowledge. Knowledge would be at one, not at eight. Because knowledge is first to know. You acknowledge a thing. You follow? That's simply to know. Wisdom, wise, comes from learning things that are presented to me as things to know. Understanding is being able to utilize and then explain the knowledge that I've obtained in the form of wisdom. I didn't jump from hydrogen to helium to, to, to go all in the third element. If you understand, first of all, in farmers, that when they say, let there be light in the Bible, the word is or in Hebrew, and it meant fire. It gives you another whole outlook because they gave you impression that it had this quick switch thing. And there's three different songs created in the Bible. One is the light in the furnace, the other provides life in the day, then one is the let there be light. All created three different things at three different times. 
If they overstand those three things, understand the Freemason, the three steps of Freemason, or those three steps of light, the three degrees of creation of light, or triple darkness. Because God had to be in the dark to cut on the light. Are you a Freemason? All right, then you was blindfolded. You was in the dark when they removed the blindfold. You follow? So what predated light? Darkness. So where does God dwell? And where does man dwell? In light. And what is in light? Chaos. You follow that? The part of your being that is imperfected is the body and its cravings, called the unperfected ashram. You follow that? And as you walk the path of Freemasonry, you get cuts, stripes, you get hits, you get slashes, until you are a perfect asher and ready to fit in the structure of things. You follow that? But you were standing before all of that knowledge in darkness. You were in the presence of God when you was blindfolded and brought in the presence of man as the worshipful master of the lodge when, the, when it was removed. You understand now? Let there be light in Freemason has to do with what's being put inside here and clicking on a light to a certain uh, dog doctrine or dogma called Freemason. It doesn't make it right. Because when a person becomes a Muslim for the first time and he takes Shahada, someone clicks on the light. He learns, I shed your light, you don't have no When someone becomes a Jew and they click on it, they say, I don't know how you don't have that it's in Hebrew, the light is cut on. You follow what I'm trying to say? We have this solution, but I'm also a Freemason, of that it's us. <laughs> and that's good. And it's always good to feel I'm the right one. What's wrong with feeling right? Everybody's had the time to feel right. You follow? Light is fire. It has something to think about. That when people are telling you in any lodge, in any doctrine, I want to take you into the light. You go to Isaiah. 1214, he said, light, isn't that the torchbearer? Isn't that Lucifer? You sure, mister, that you know what you're doing when you take me into the light? Because you're not taking me to the light mode, you're taking me into the fire. Can you keep me from you? Have you got the power that God had to keep Daniel safe from the lion? You have that power? <laughs> but some of them just have on costumes and symbols. And they're no longer the alchemists that had that power. Because they stepped away from the Egyptian doctrine. They taught them the science of alchemy. You understand what I mean now? 